Elder Christy. I am very honored to be able to share the word with you all. And it's a, it is a very big privilege for me to share what God gave me today. So if you would turn with me to John 8, 31. Okay, John 8, 31 through 36. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin, and the slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So what is John saying, though? He's saying, if you cast your sin unto me, you will be made free because that's the truth. What's the truth? He's faithful and just to forgive you from all your sins. So the truth will make you free. Today we are going to be talking about the four types of people that are going to be knocking at our door. So the first person, also known as the lost person, does not know Jesus Christ. They know about, but they do not know who he is in general. So they don't know what is... They wonder, what does Jesus do? What did he do? He saved the lost from bad doctrine. A mindset that is common, though, for this person is that they chose to be in the spot that they are in, that they chose to not know what, what to do in situations of that we would know of. Okay. They, would, they would think, because they haven't been taught anything else, people think that they are doing it because that's what their choice is. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. They assume that they want to do that when they don't know how to do anything else because that's what their parents taught them and their grandparents taught their parents and it just goes on and on from generation to generation. I can think of some lost people that have been doing the same things for years and years and years because they don't know anything different. The second person. This person is the I know about God. What is the difference between the lost and the I know about God person? The lost doesn't have a Bible. They don't read his word. They don't go to church. And they don't have any knowledge of what to do in situations than other what they've been taught to do. The I know about God person is a know-it-all that knows what the Bible says in the wrong times. When somebody needs a question, they give, uh, oh, you shouldn't do that, you should do this. It's a common thing for churches to get into, instead of having knowledge, to know what to do in situations of 
of hardship. They think that, oh, yep, if, if I do this, th- then this will happen because it says it in his word when they don't live it. That I know about God person doesn't let the word become life in their life. They just know it in their head, which makes it unable for them to allow God to work through their life and the word to come alive in their life. The third person is a doer of the word. What is, what is a doer of the word? A doer of the word does the word. It's a person that lets the word become life in their life. They know who God is on a, in a relationship, and they have knowledge and wisdom. Okay. That I know about God person doesn't have wisdom. They just know The doer of the word has knowledge and wisdom. Which means when somebody needs correction, they can correct them and know that they need correction. When somebody needs help, they can they can use the wisdom that God gave them to let them help other people. Because the doer of the word, they can't do something that God doesn't tell them to do. Because if they do something other than what God told them to do, they become a I know about God person. Because they are disobedient to what God has said. Some churches are disobedient to what God said because they don't know him on a basis relationship. Why do they not know him on a basis relationship? Because they don't let the word become life in their life. Because they don't know how to let the word become life in their life. It's a state of being in the middle between lost and trying to be saved, but they don't know what to do in between. So they read the Bible, but they can't relate to it. They can know about it in their head, but they can't relate to the Bible and say, oh yeah, I've been in that situation. I can relate to that, so that means I can do this, and that will change it. They, can't, they don't do that because they don't know How? The fourth person is a I only bumped into God at church person. (laughs) This person has experienced God at church. They know who God is. They have a relationship, but only on Sundays and Wednesdays. They've seen the miraculous happen, but they don't know the miraculous. Wow. Mm, they know because people have said, oh, yep, signs, wonders, and miracles, but they don't know signs, wonders, and miracles. They don't know that there is a better way than to just let it become life in their life. They don't know how to let the word become life in their life either. The second person and the fourth person don't know how to let the word become life in their life because no one could tell them how because everyone else was in the same spot as them. Because everyone was in the same spot as them, they couldn't tell them how to do it because they didn't do it themselves. Talking to these four types of people is a interesting thing to do. It, it, you have to speak to every one of these people differently. Okay. Okay. Right. You can't correct the lost if they don't know everything dif- anything different. 
You can't just rebuke that I know about God because maybe they think they're in line, but they don't know that they're not. Sometimes there are instances where we need to know Bam is a doer of the word. Why are we a doer? Why are we the doer of the word person? Because we have knowledge and wisdom, because we have a priest that prays on our behalf to know God more. Amen. Talking to the lost person is trying to break that mindset of what they've already, always done. When talking to the lost person, we can tell them about the Bible, we can show them what his word is. Showing them what this word is can be more beneficial than something that, that we think would help them. In general, in everything, there is more truth in this than what my mind can try to think to say that to that person. Talking to the I know about God, if they're in a spot that they want to be in. Some people in the I know about God category don't want to be in that spot anymore. You have to see that just because they're in that category does not mean that they're a religious person that just wants to correct you all the time. We have to see that they could be in a spot that they don't want to be in. They may want to move forward and see God. They may want to have a relationship with God. They may want to do all these things that people at other churches are doing because they want to be with God. So talking to the I know about God person, if this person is wanting to move forward, then you can tell them, okay, I am a doer of the word. God helped me in this spot to move forward. I called on his name and he helped me when I thought I was lost. If this person doesn't want to move forward, there's, there's no point of talking to them because they're just going to argue back and snap back with everything you say. Because they want to just know about God. They don't want to have a relationship. They just want to tell people, oh, this, this, is, this is how you do something, not, not any way else. This is the only way to be saved. This is the only way to be in line with God when there is people learn in different ways just because somebody learned in one way doesn't mean that that's the only way to learn. How to talk to the I only bumped into God at church person. Tell them advice they need to hear. If we have knowledge and wisdom, then we can tell them the advice they need to hear. We can show them what letting the word becomes life in their life is. We can show them what it is to be a Christian that is in a daily relationship with God and not just on Sundays and Wednesdays. What are ways that you can think of that would help a person? Imagine any person that you've been talking to for a while and think, okay, what? How would, what, what state is this person in? Is this person a lost and I know about God? Does this person, person do the word and I just don't know it? Am I blind to see that they're doing the word? Or do they only bump into God at church? We got to know what person is in what state. Because if we're thinking that somebody's in the lost state when they're in the I only bump into God church state, then we're 
we're going to mess up the journey for them. They're not going to want to go on this journey anymore because they don't have the right advice. Having a tongue that speaks is a common thing. These four people have tongues that speak. The law speaks what they know of. The I know about God person speaks what they want to. It's a common thing in this world to have a tongue that speaks. Okay. But how uncommon is it for, it for a tongue that speaks truth to be in this world? Okay. I mean, if we're in Goshen, we better know that we have a tongue that speaks truth. Because a tongue that speaks truth cannot lie, they cannot deceive. They will not do anything that would make somebody want to leave. Turn with me to First Peter chapter three, verse 10. First Peter chapter three, verse 10 through 12. For he who would love who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good, let him seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. What is this verse saying? People that have a tongue that speaks truth, God's face is turned towards them. People who do not have a tongue that speaks truth, who speak lies, deceit, and evil, he has his face turned from them. He's not going to sit there and dangle a carrot waiting for you to bite on to turn your face towards him again. He's going to turn his face as soon as you turn yours. We can't be thinking that we're doing something for God if it's the complete opposite. If we have our face turned toward, away from the art altar, then we're missing the point of even being there. There's no point of trying to think that we're worshiping the right thing if we know our face is turned from God. If we know our face is turned from God, then he's, he's just going to walk away. He's going to go seek those who want him, who want to have a tongue that speaks truth, that doesn't speak deceit. He is going to be there to look for those that have their face turned t- towards him. The doer of the word is probably the only one that speaks truth. If, oh, that's right. if they do, if, it's a if. Because people can do the word and they can still have a tongue that speaks lies and evil and deceit. I mean, there are, I mean, we're not perfect, but still we should at least try to have a tongue that speaks truth. (laughs) If If we're not trying, then there's no point of trying to bring the gospel to someone because they're just gonna hear a dead, withered away tree with bad fruit on it. They're not going to, see and hear what God is trying to bring to them because, he, because we're not speaking truth. Evangeliz- evangelism does not happen because we speak dry things. Evangelism happens because we speak truth. When truth is said, someone can be made free because the truth sets you free. Not the evil, not the deceit, the truth. What is the truth? 
what God has done in your life, what he is doing, what he has done. What is the truth? What is speaking truth? Speaking truth is speaking that God is King of kings, Lord of lords, and there's no other higher name. Will you turn with me to Matthew 15? (laughs) Matthew 15, verse 11. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. People can say whatever they want, and it won't, it won't, I mean, it won't affect us if we have the armor of God. They can say things and it won't affect us, but if we say something. It's like we're betraying God when we say something that he doesn't want us to say. When we, it's like we break God's heart. We basically let the enemy in and let him just come in and destroy what God has been trying to do in us when we speak something that is not truth. We basically turn our backs on him when we say something to someone that is not truth. Whether out of anger, anger, whether wh- whether it's out of whatever, it's it's still sin. Sin is sin. It says it will defile a man. It doesn't mean that we have to be defiled forever. God can restore us, but we're going to be defiled as long until we ask God to to forgive us. Because if the truth makes us free, I bet it can also make us whole. Amen. The truth can make you free. What is freedom? Being able to know what God is doing, know what he has done. What is freedom? Being able to come freely into the presence of God knowing that he's going to be there and say, good job, my faithful servant. Thank you for speaking truth to that person. Thank you for saying what I wanted you to say to that person. So are we winning the lost and saving souls? We have to have the tongue that speaks truth first before we can win the lost and save souls. Because truth sets you free. If truth sets us free, I bet it can set someone else free that we meet down the street. If truth can set me free, I bet it can set someone else free. And the joy that I would bring us to see someone know that their eternity is saved, that they don't have to fear, that they don't have to live with the doubt that they've lived with. How much we would feel good. And that's what God was meaning at the beginning of this year. Are we feeling good about having a tongue that speaks truth? Are we feeling good? Do, do you want to feel good when somebody's eternity is saved? Do you want to feel good or do you want to just say something that you already know? Do we want to say something that we already know? If we say what we already know, somebody, it, it, 
it, may, it might have saved us, but it probably won't save somebody else. Not one person is, looks alike or was made in the same way. Everybody knows how they like to have their steaks. Some like them well done, some like them raw. But nobody likes to learn in the same way. Mark chapter 16, 15 through 18, if you'll turn there with me. Mark chapter 16, 15 through 18. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And, they, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I want to take a look at verse 17, though. And they will speak with new tongues. What is this new tongue? A tongue that speaks truth. Oh, very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, not Shandai and Abote. Not Shandai and Abote. <laughs> but in my name, they will, they will speak with new tongues. Yeah. My, my goodness. I like it. I like it. They will speak with a tongue that's, that speaks truth. They will have a tongue that speaks truth, and they, when they have that tongue, they will be able to cast out demons, they will lay oh. on hands on the sick, and they will recover. Why was Jesus able to have all these wonders and signs happen all over? Because he had a tongue that speaks truth. Oh. He didn't hold back his tongue from what God was trying to say to him. He uh -huh. had a tongue that speaks truth. Why do we mark what Jesus said read in the Bible? Because we know that was him, and we can see the demonstration of what a true tongue that speaks truth is. Go into all the world. What is all the world? Sandusky? Elizabeth Town? Anywhere. There's always someone that is hungry for, for God. There's always someone that needs an answer on one specific day. And that day could be the day that you encounter that person. That's why he said go into all the world. Because every day somebody needs an answer. Somewhere. Do we believe? He said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Do we believe? Do we believe that we can cast out demons if we have a tongue that speaks truth? Do we believe that we can have, even have a tongue that speaks truth? Do we believe this verse in the Bible? We may believe a lot of other things, but do we believe this? They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Do we believe that? Or do we think that, oh, it's, if we drink anything deadly, it kind of has the phrase deadly, like <laughs> right, right there. Or, we're gonna die. <laughs> Do we believe that we would do that? Or do we believe if Jesus said it himself? The guy that had his tongue that speaks truth, if he said it himself, then I would believe that it's true. All right. Makes sense to me. It, it makes sense. I mean, we, 
There's no point of not believing it. The disciples had tongues of fire. Why don't we have tongues that speak truth? When we have a tongue that speaks truth, the dove can rest upon our shoulder and we can say things that no one else would know but that one person. The dove can whisper in our ear, this person needs this, we say that to that person, they know that that was God because they have never shared it with anyone. It's been to themselves. They've had grief over it, and they can be relieved that there is a God that can heal that grief. Back in Feast of Dedication, God revealed something to me. A real light has an effect on people. A real light, if you get close to it, it, it's hot. It will burn you. But a fake light, it may look just as pretty, just as good, but it will not have an effect on people if they get close to it. It can't light anything up because it's not lit up itself. It's a fake orientation of God. They have, lit, they have thought, even if it's as realistic as it can be, it's not a true light. That's right. That's so true. You can't be a light of the world if you can't light anything else up. Oh. We can't be a light of the world if we aren't lit up. Come on. If my temple isn't, if God is not in my temple and it's not clean, and there is pecking things. If I rejoice in iniquity, I'm sure I'm definitely not going to be able to light anything, anyone else up because I'm not even lit up. I'd rather have no, no light instead of a fake, uh, instead of something fake. I'd rather just have nothing there because I don't want to mock God in what he does. God said, let there be light, and there was light. I don't want to try to fake that and say, oh yeah, God said, let there be light in my life. I don't want to have something that I can make in my life. I don't want those fake lights in my life. Because they had to be made from somewhere and it wasn't from God. Words of knowledge, we all, I'm pretty sure we all know what a word of knowledge is. It's when God gives somebody a pain to call out or hear something. But to talk to these people, yes, it's good to have a word of knowledge, but it's not, it's not needed for all the time. It's good to hear what God has to say for people but sometimes a person just needs a hug and does not need to be rebuked and doesn't need to be, say, said anything else. Have we misrepresented God's reflection? Pastor Aaron preached that a few Sundays ago. Do we have a bad reflection? What's God re God's reflection? God's reflection is that we would have a tongue that speaks truth. Why? Because he has a tongue that speaks truth. Why does he have a tongue that speaks truth? Because he is perfect, holy, and nothing, no name is above him. And if we're not reflecting that, then we're not reflecting the right thing. A tongue that speaks truth. 
how, how many of you here know someone that has a tongue that speaks truth? Does that person speak more about worldly things and evil than they do truth? Do they only speak truth at church? Do they only have a tongue that speaks truth at church? Like they only, they only put on their fancy stuff at church? They don't ever wear it anywhere else. They don't want to ever wear it. They just want to look good at church. That's all. Do we, as the doer of the words, do we just have a tongue that speaks truth at church? Because if we only have a tongue that speaks truth at church, then we're not a doer of the word. If you thought you were a doer of the word and you only, and you only speak truth at church, then you're, you're not a doer of the word. You, you're an I know about God person. Or bumped into him. You're, it's, it's one of those two. I believe that God is wanting us to have a tongue that speaks truth because if we're going to evangelize, we have to have a tongue that speaks truth. Why are we the greatest evangelistic team in the region? Because we're gaining tongues of truth today. So the altar call is this. The altar call is if you want a tongue that speaks truth. You want to know that you have a tongue that speaks truth and you, you just want to know if you're one of these four people, if you're not the doer of the word. That is the altar call today. So God, we just thank you for this day that you have gave us to have a tongue that speaks truth. I thank you that you are moving in a way that you have not moved before today, God. I thank you that you, just like John said, the truth will make you free. So God, I thank you that we get tongues of truth that people may be made free.